Hello everyone and today I'm going to be giving you uh, my quick thoughts on the new Pokemon Legends Arceus game. I've played about 6 hours, these are my first impressions and I've got to say so far, really loving it, really enjoying it. I think it's a really great game. Obviously I haven't played it all through, but I just wanted to give you some of my first thoughts and the kind of things that you'll be doing in the game. So obviously it's a lot different to normal Pokemon games. It's all open, well, I say it's open world, it's like a section world, but each area is really big and there's a lot of exploring to do. Uh, but you start on a, on a beach, not knowing really what's going on, you find a phone, and after that you kind of begin your story. As I said, it isn't a normal Pokemon game, so there's no uh, gyms, no fighting eight gym leaders and the Elite Four. It's more about going out in the world, exploring, catching Pokemon. Uh, and trying to just fill out your Pokedex and trying to get as much information you can on each Pokemon. So the main hub is a village which has what you normally expect, like a shop, a uh, place for you to sleep, uh, and some other new things such as crafting and farming areas as well as an area where your Pokemon are kept. And also you'll get a lot of your missions and requests which are essentially, essentially side quests here. And some missions require you to be here to complete as well. As I said, there's a new crafting system, uh, so you can craft nearly all, well so far all the items that I've found I can also craft. And you do this by using items that you collect while you're out adventuring. Uh, so to leave adventuring, you leave the village and you'll be given a screen asking you where you want to go next. Uh, so you just choose, it's kind of like a monster hunter system I thought when I first played it. Uh, you can also see uh, what quests and side quests you've got and where you need to go to do them. So when you're out when you're out in the world, a lot of the game is revolves around so catching Pokemon, fighting Pokemon, and also just collecting items that you can later use to craft. Uh, so you can send your Pokemon out to collect them and they get a small amount of XP for doing it as well. And if you just throw your Pokemon, you can just run on and they'll collect the item for you. The way that evolutions work in the game is a bit different. Pokemon don't just evolve at the end of battles, because battles are kind of seamless, so you don't go in and out of them, they just happen in the world, as you'll see later. Uh, so to evolve, you have, it tells you on the screen that this Pokemon can evolve. So you go to your menu and you just click on it, click evolve, and then you get the evolve happen. It's a good looking animation. And this will also happen, for example, well, I got caught an Eevee and it told me when it was ready to be levelled up to a Sylveon because I did it at the right time. So it wasn't a case of me having to find out how much of a friend, I think it's friendship that Eevee's based on. Uh, the game just said that Eevee can now evolve and I managed to get a Sylveon. So the main way to capture Pokemon is just to go up to them in the world, uh, if you be stealthy. It's the other way around in this Pokemon game, so you hide in the tall grass and if the Pokemon doesn't see you, it's easy to catch. Uh, you just throw your Pokeball and hopefully catch it. Being sneaky is normally the best way because quite a lot of Pokemon will attack you which means that you won't be able to catch them outside of battle, you have to do a normal battle and then catch. So I found that sneaking up on them and then just throwing a Pokeball at them gives you the best odds of catching them without them seeing you and you still get XP for doing it that way, kind of like let's go games. But if you do enter into a battle, as it's kind of seen as it kind of happens in the world uh, and then you can choose your moves, there's the new strong style, agile style. Uh, so you don't start with these, you just start with the base version of the move, but as you level up your Pokemon masters that move and it will tell you they've mastered it, which means that they can use the Agile style or the Strong style. Uh, Agile style gives you a chance to act two times in a row and makes the move weaker, whereas Strong style makes the move stronger but gives you a chance for your opponent to move twice in a row. Uh, so it's kind of about managing that system. And to your to your advantage and using the move if you think a strong style move will kill you then use that. As you can see I also got a Vaporeon which I was really happy with. Uh, Vaporeon is an awesome Pokemon. All the evolutions are amazing so I was happy I got two already. And again, uh, if you've got a super effective move, strong style quite often will give you that one hit KO. There are trainer battles as well in this game, though they don't happen quite as frequent, anywhere near as frequently as the battles against wild Pokemon. There's only been, so far in the first six hours I've said, I've only had around five trainer battles, and they're still fun, but most of the time it's fighting out in the wild, and some battles in the wild actually, some wild Pokemon are quite strong, So, but you can run, and when you run it's not, I haven't had a time where running's failed yet. 
And of course to catch a Pokemon in battle, uh, it's the same as normal, try and weaken its health, give it a status effect, and yeah, throw a Pokeball with a Pokeball that you have in your pocket. And you still get experience to catch Pokemon this way. Another way to catch Pokemon is to lure them with food, so you can throw a berry out, and then when their back is turned and they're eating the berry, you can then throw your Pokeball and catch it. It makes the Pokemon easier to catch, and also some Pokemon have tasks in your Pokedex to feed them, uh, which helps complete your Pokedex, which we'll look at later. And sometimes you just gotta defeat a certain number of Pokemon and with certain types of moves. If you don't send a Pokemon to battle and a Pokemon aggro is on you, they can attack you and they can hurt you. Uh, you don't have a HP gauge as such, they'll just throw out their move and the screen will start to turn dark. And if it goes full of dark, you'll black out and respawn. There's also these Pokemon known as Alpha Pokemon that you'll find in the wild. They're normally a lot higher level than the others around and a lot stronger. Uh, but if you do manage to catch one, as I said, they're much stronger and they also have a chance to have moves that they wouldn't normally be able to have. And there's also frenzied Pokemon, although that's more into the story, so I don't really want to go into that too much. But yeah, when you've finished in an area or you want to go back to the village, you can talk to the professor and based on how many Pokemon you've caught or interacted with, you'll get a certain amount of money, which will go up the higher rank you get in the, in the, in the Galaxy Team system. Um, which you'll see your points to be level up in that are based on the amount of research tasks and Pokedex you fill in. And as you get to higher levels, you'll get more money when you go back to town. There's also a shop system and the map of the village. The village has everything that you'll need. Uh, it has a move learner, your Pokemon pasture, it has a farm, which we'll get into, and like change appearance and things like that. And you can fast travel. Anything that's blue, you can fast travel to from anywhere. Also, your satchel is quite a big part of the game. At the start, you only have a few slots, but with this man here, uh, you can pay him to get one more slot each time. It'll start about 100 and then go up a small amount each time. And that, so far, that's been the most important thing I've found to give you more space in your inventory. If you want to free up space in your inventory, you can also put stuff in your item box, which you can access from the village or from your camp when you're out exploring. You have base camps that you, that you start your expeditions from. And you can go back to them, heal, change Pokemon, uh, get items in and out of your storage while still out in the expedition. Uh, this is the farm system. Uh, basically, you can give the, you can pay this guy a small fee and ask him to grow something. And then you'll get a number of that item after a certain amount of time has passed. It's really useful if you're struggling to find something out in the wild. I haven't really struggled that much so far. You can also upgrade your village facilities by doing uh, side missions, the requests. So one of them is to give you an extra field to grow stuff in, and one of them is also when you've leveled up your Galaxy Team rank uh, to give you more items to be able to buy in the general store. So it's worth leveling up your rank, but you'll, you'll level up your rank as you go anyway because most things that you do will add to that ranking system. And when you do do a request, you'll get a reward for doing so. Uh, normally it's items, but I said it can be things such as expansions to part of the village. There's also a lost satchel system, so on your map it will tell you a small area where someone's lost their satchel. If you then find it and go into the menu to return it, it will give you some merit points. Uh, you can then use these to spend on things such as thunderstones and other things such as that. This is the Pokedex, this is one of the most important things. As you'll see, each Pokemon has a number of tasks that you need to try and complete. Uh, the, the goal is so far to get each Pokemon to research level 10, so doing 10 of the things listed, and then it will be marked as complete. You see the red and white Pokeball, that means you've completed that entry. Uh, the black filled in Pokeball means you've caught it, and the other one means that you've just seen it. So that's the main part is of the game is filling in your Pokedex. And you see some pretty awesome Pokemon on your journey. I saw this Gyarados, uh, didn't fight it, but thought it was really awesome just to see it out in the wild and you can ride Pokemon. So you get your first Pokemon to ride really quite early on, uh, which makes traversing the world really easy. It's really fast to do so when you get the Pokemon. Uh, but you'll still obviously want to get off and catch wild Pokemon, collect things. Uh, with the other, each of the Pokemon you can ride has a special ability as well. 
So the second one you get will point you to where treasure is hidden, so you can follow that and dig it up, and you'll get rewards for doing so. And you can switch between them without having to get off. Just press right and left on the D-pad, and it will switch uh, which Pokemon that you're riding. And also the way moves work, so you, you go into a menu and you can choose what moveset you have, and mix and match your moves as you want them. Uh, so it's not a case of just forgetting one, uh, you just choose what set you want from what your Pokemon knows. And also there's mini games, which... They're okay, they're not the main part of the game, but they pass a bit of time and they're kind of silly as you can see. So my main thoughts are that, as I said, I've had a really great time with the game so far. If you're a Pokemon fan, you're going to love it. If you're an open world game, uh, you kind of like Monster Hunter, Zelda, that kind of thing, I'd say you give it a go. It's really good, it's really fun. It's more of a collecting game than a normal Pokemon game, so it's not really as much about the battles as it is about the catching, kind of like the Let's Go games, more along that vein, uh, and trying to get Pokemon to do different things so you can fill out your Pokemon decks that's the main part of the game but there's lots of quests and side quests to introduce you to the mechanics and uh, keep you going and there's a lot of different varieties of pokemon even so far i've seen a lot of pokemon and the fact that they can attack you is a new mechanic as well so you have to dodge that and that brings some kind of new angle to the gameplay although quite often you can normally just run past and then get out of the, the aggro range but it's something interesting it does play into a few of the larger boss fights uh, which i haven't mentioned here because they're part of the story if you are into games more action packs like call of duty or more uh, opponent based like fifa or something like that this probably isn't the game for you apparently th there are no actual online pokemon battles so you can't take your pokemons online which was a bit of a disappointment uh, you can trade with other people over the internet but you can't battle them that's something i hope they add in the future because that was one of my favourite parts of the end game of Pokemon, uh, completing the story and then being able to fight against other trainers after you've trained your Pokemon. But so far, yeah, I'm having a blast with it. I'd recommend the game. It's a must-have for any Pokemon fan, and even if you're not a Pokemon fan, I'd say definitely try it out. Anyway, I hope you liked this quick first impression video. If you've got any comments, leave them below and let me know what you think of the game. Have a great day.